the poetry of life and what it all means and why she's here. None of it really clicks until literally the last episode. Lexi's play is the thing that finally allows Rue to see herself as just a human being who's been through a lot. We are not our worst moments. So what are the limits of storytelling and how can we tell these stories with these characters? Hey, whispering, whispering. Still all this chaos. Congratulations, Lexi! Lexi, you really outdid yourself. Oh, shit. Lexi's so paranoid of hurting people's feelings or saying too much or offending people, and then in the end. Stop, stop, stop. I should stop? I'm not the one putting on a play to humiliate and embarrass you. Oh, oh, really? I don't think Lexi's expecting Cassie to have that big of a reaction, but yeah. <laughs> You always see yourself different than how other people see you. Cassie is already an insecure girl, and so seeing this character portrayed to her just adds another layer to the self-doubt she carries. Cassie and Maddie have their breakup, and Maddie chooses to not get violent. But then the play comes around, and Cassie is acting insane. Oh, this bitch needs to be put down. Maddie, no! Maddie, no! And Maddie does choose to get violent with her. I thought that we were achieving greatness with Cassie, and then she just gets knocked back down again. A few days earlier, I stopped by Elliot's. I have a lot of I'm sorry's to do, but not a lot of I forgive you's. So thank you for that. The scene between Elliot and Rue is really heartbreaking because you also realize that these are two people who are going in very different directions in life. Action. Truth or dare? <laughs> Truth. Do you think we can still be friends? You know, you're the one who said we weren't any good for each other. Can I tell you something? Uh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. I'll go over and I'll shoot some stuff. And then when I have a break, I'll go over and hang out with Lab, because he has a studio now on the lot. So I'm hanging out with him. He's finding new sounds to complement every emotion that we go through in the show. Me and Zendaya were actually sitting in each other's kind of spiritual energy and space. And we're getting to inspire each other to make something fresh. Sam just came up to me and was like, yo, I was thinking, like, you play the guitar in this, and, like, you sing a song. It's to Rue, but not really about Rue, but it like is about Rue, but it's like a surreal moment, but it's not. And I'm like, you just made this decision? I like it. Dominic came in and jumped in on the score pieces we were working on and played some guitar, because he's a great guitarist. The cast are not just acting, they're, they're part of the music now. And I think that makes it even more special. Cal's unraveling at the seams. He's a guy who's out there living his truth and experiencing everything he stopped himself from experiencing because he had this very sort of rigid set of family values and rules that he lived by. You happy? I'm figuring it out. And I think Cal at that point just kind of says, fuck it. I'm going to be me. You don't get to ruin our lives and just Move on. In that moment, Nate has exhausted all of his options, and he doesn't have an answer to why he feels the way he feels. For the longest time, I had this recurring nightmare just over and over. The great point to me in that scene is the moment that Cal just immediately sobers. Nate comes to him with some real stuff and shows some real vulnerability, and I think that touches Cal. I spent my whole life trying to protect you. And instead of loving me, you fucking hated me for it. I'm not proud of the person I've been. I don't think you're ever going to change. Nate. Don't do this. I really got to talk to you about something. 
Faye. He's kind of like that missing piece that Ash and Fez never knew that they needed. The way that he treats Faye really shows like another side of him. He genuinely wants to be a good, loving person, but it's the situation that we're in sometimes. That's why I wanted to save Fez. And because Custer was a bitch. <laughs> No. Life deals you the hand you, you have to play, and sometimes good people are forced to do bad things. Fesco has a strong sense of his morals, and he feels responsible to take care of Ashtray, you know, as his little brother. Sorry, bro, but we had to make it look like you ain't do this. When Fesco hits Ashtray, he's just trying to protect the kid, where he takes the fall for everything to give his little brother that, that chance at life that he didn't really have. Listen to me. I did this shit. Not you. <laughs> Shooting the SWAT scene was super interesting. It felt very real. There were a couple times where it was like kind of scary, and I was like, oh, like I'm just gonna be like actually scared in this moment. There's an enormous amount of precautions that go into it. Please don't shoot! All of these things to ensure that we're all doing it in a safe way, but that still allow us to do the work. It was hectic. They had the dust falling on our heads. It was crazy. It felt real. At one point, I turned around and they had the guns pointed at me. I'm like, oh, smokes. <laughs> it was a sad day, because we, we really close. Devon, that's like my little bro in real life. That's my bro, that's fam. Even though he couldn't be here with us tonight, this one's for you. The trajectory of this season has always been, how does Rue find hope? And Lexi's play allowed her to kind of look back at her life without a level of judgment that she normally does when thinking about the past. Much like I think we look at Rue as an audience and we can see the, the sort of the goodness in her. I just, I just wanted to tell you that I, I thought your play was really beautiful. Lexi and Rue don't interact that much throughout the season. But after Rue sees the play, we have a moment together where we realize that we're just two girls who lost their dads, and we realize how much we mean to each other. I miss you. A deep friendship like that is a necessity in life, and being able to kind of talk about these things is an important part of the human experience. And also the idea that Lexi has taken all of this stuff from her life, whether it's trauma or pain or disappointment, and she's created something beautiful out of it. You've been through a lot, and you know what to do with it. I think something that's kept me afloat while playing the character is knowing that she is a version of Sam when he was younger knowing that he was able to take all those things that happened to him and turn it into this art is something that gave me great comfort. And knowing that, well, Rue one day is gonna grow up and she's going to be like Sam. I think having a sweet moment and walking away from Jules, not in a place of anger or resentment, but in of like respect and love, shows that she's choosing herself, choosing to take the steps that she needs to get better. Relationships move in terms of ebbing and flowing, and then needs change, and that causes people to fade away from each other. And that's the reality of loving people, and the memory is still like a gift. Jules was my first love. At least that's how it felt. I'd like to remember it that way. And ultimately, that's what makes life beautiful. The messiness and the, the faux pas and the mistakes and the things you say that you shouldn't have said. Like, that's what makes life worth living. My hope for the audience after episode eight is that they feel like they've been through it with these characters and that they love them all despite their faults and, and flaws and that they're excited about what happens next. Mm -hmm.